Hey everybody, this is Laurie Meyer. I wanted to jump in and show you a very fun card that was inspired by a card I saw posted by Debbie McGeed. I've changed things up just a teeny bit from the measurements that Debbie had and wanted to share this card. It's made with a Sending Smiles bundle and three of the new five in colors. The three colors that I used are Sweet Sorbet, the Parakeet Party, and then the Tahitian Tide. And I think those three colors just work together incredibly well. I want to jump in. I'm going to show you how I made this. Let's first start with the products, the main products that I used. This wonderful Sending Smiles stamp set is just super fun to use. It has amazing sentiments and some really beautiful flowers that can be combined with different colors and different designs so that you can come up with many different flowers for your cards. And then there's also a corresponding die set. And the dies that are included in this set are incredibly useful, not only to cut out the sentiments, which are these two, but also to use as a lot of the cutouts for the flower shapes. And one of my favorite part of the die set are the two dies that make the sending sentiment. You have the background die right here, and I use that to make the white background. And then you have the scripted die, which I use to make the actual word that you can see in the Tahitian Tide. But let me get a couple of things in front of the camera because I want to show you step-by-step step how to make this card. And I decided that the easiest way to do that was to put a little diagram together. I will copy this and I'll make sure that it is part of the information that I save on, on my website. And the website name is stampedgreetings.com. I'll put that piece of paper back here in just a minute so you can, you can get that information as well. But let's take a look at some of the components of the card. And I always like to look at the final product and then kind of dissect it and build it up from the beginning. So notice if you look at the Tahitian Tide piece, the actual card base, and that's what we're talking about right now. Notice how the final cut aligns with the diagram that I've put in here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to recreate that piece. So you are going to start with a piece of paper that is five and a half by 11. If you take a regular piece of eight and a half by 11 and you put that into your paper cutter, so the eight and a half inch side is on the top, take three inches off and you're going to get a piece that is five and a half by 11. And then if you use this diagram right here, you're going to see where you need to make some marks on your card. So imagine this outline as your five and a half by 11, and I have made it to scale. So it really is five and a half by 11. I'm going to bring in my final piece one more time because I want to show you using an example where we're going and what you're going to do. So this is an example of a card base. And again, you can see that we're going to trim off a rectangular piece in the upper right, in the upper left, and then on the lower right and the lower left. We're also going to make a couple of score lines. The first thing that you want to do when you have your full piece is you want to put your paper into a scoring board and from each side at three and three eighths, you're going to score your paper. So you're going to put your paper in, score it at three and three eighths, turn your paper to the other end, and again, score at three and three eighths. It's important to do the score lines first because they're going to be used as marks. They're going to be used as visual places for you to make that cut, as you can see. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to get out a pencil 
And you're just going to put a couple of little tick marks on your paper. So you're going to go one inch down from the upper right corner, put a little tick mark. Down on the lower right, in, right corner, you're gonna go one inch in and put a little tick mark. And then if you want to, you can take your pencil and you're gonna draw a line from where that score line is to the one inch tick mark. And then from the tick mark that you just made down to the other tick mark on the bottom. So you're gonna draw a line and do that kind of lightly, although you'll be able to use a, an eraser to get that pencil line off. You're going to mirror your cuts on the opposite side. So one inch down on the left top, one inch in on the left bottom, little tick mark here, draw your line up to where your score line is. And again, draw a line from the tick mark that you just made down to the tick mark on the bottom. And then you're going to put your piece of paper into your paper cutter. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to put your blade so that you can see that light pencil mark that you drew on your paper. And you're gonna cut from point to point or cut along your, your penciled line. Do the same thing here, do the same thing here, do the same thing here. I'm not showing you that as actual steps because I think it is pretty easy to see and to follow, but I did want to give you the dimensions on, on how to do that. And then you're gonna end up with your card base. So this is what the card base is going to look like. And that's where we get that slanted gatefold. All right, so our card base is all set. The next things that we need to work on, and I'm gonna bring back in the card, we need to work on the pieces that are going to go on the front of the gatefolds. So in other words, the piece of parakeet party that I have here and the piece of sweet sorbet. And these two pieces are from the six by six in color designer series paper collection, which is phenomenal. I've used it quite a bit. I have little pieces left that I'm not going to get rid of because I know I'll be able to use them on a project. So I'm going to show you, I've already cut out these pieces and these are the panels that I've made for the card that we're gonna to put together today. And you'll see that I've cut them so that they are slanted. And I'm going to show you these dimensions in a minute. And you can see that the other piece is also cut. So it is slanted and it's going to fit on that gatefold. The first thing that I suggest that you do is pick out your designer series paper, or maybe you want to use cardstock, whatever it is that you want to use to put on top of your gatefolds, pick those out. And also figure out what color you want on which side. Obviously I could have put the red on the left and the green on the right. I chose to flip that. I could have used completely different colors or I could have used the same color on both. Maybe I wanted to use green on either. That, whatever you want to do is absolutely fine. But this is where we're going. We're going to create the two panels that are going to go on the side of the card. All right, again, I'm going to bring in a little diagram because I want to show you the measurements. I think it's easy to show these to you. You can grab the sizes of the paper that you're going to need and also see how to make the cuts. And this is very, very similar to what we did on the card base. So the two, I'm calling them panels, and I've made both out of designer series paper. You're gonna start with pieces that are three quarter inches by five and three eighths. If you have a design, let's say you have a flower on your designer series paper that really probably needs to be shown vertically, be mindful of how you cut the paper. So this is your three and three quarter 
this is your five and three eighths. So again, just be mindful of how you're doing that. As I mentioned, decide which piece you're going to put on which side. And if I bring the card back in, you're gonna see that I've decided that my left panel is going to be green. So that's the parakeet party. The right panel is going to be red, and this is the sweet sorbet. So just take a minute and figure out which one you, which color you want on which panel, and then use these diagrams. So again, we've got the three and a quarter, five and three eighths, and very, very similar to what you did on the card base. You're going to go one inch down on the left panel. You're gonna to go to the right corner at the top, one inch down and right over at the corner, right at the top left of this piece of designer series paper, you're gonna put a little line between that one inch tick mark and the upper left hand corner. And then down on the bottom, you're going to come in one inch from the right, put a tick mark, a line, and just cut right up to where you've put your first tick mark. And you're gonna end up with a piece that looks like this. We need to mirror the panel on the right side. So you're gonna start with a piece of designer series paper. Again, three and a quarter, five and three eighths. And because we want to mirror this panel, we're gonna do everything in the opposite way. So for your right panel, you're gonna start up in your upper left-hand corner, an inch down, put a little tick mark, draw a pencil line up to the right top corner. That's where we're gonna cut that. And then on the bottom left, you're gonna come in an inch and you're going to draw another tick mark and you're going to put a pencil line between the tick mark up at the top, this one, and you're going to cut. So you're gonna end up with these two pieces and they are going to fit onto the card base that we have created. And let me show you. So they're gonna fit really well onto that card base and onto that side of the card base, okay? Before I do any kind of gluing because I am going to adhere those directly to the card base. I'm going to get rid of some of the pencil lines because I did draw pencil lines on here and you probably can't see them incredibly well. Um, I don't know if you can see that one right there, but if you do have pencil lines, just take a, an eraser and get them off. I don't know that anybody would really see them if you didn't take a couple of seconds to take off your pencil lines, but I'm just gonna be overly cautious here. So just getting rid of those. I'm gonna flip this over to the other side. I can't really see the pencil lines, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my eraser since I have it out, just to make sure, just to kind of clean it up and make sure that everything looks good. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the panels. And I would have cut these on this edge and on the other. Again, I just want it to look as nice and clean as possible. And try to get the eraser pieces off of my workspace. And let's see, I would have cut here and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase those. And there are a couple places where I can see that there were some pencil marks that I want to be taken away. All right, so now we have some nice clean paper to work with. And we are just going to adhere the pieces that we have cut together. So I'm gonna bring my card base out and I'm just going to open it up. I can see better with a kind of a white background where I need to put this piece. And you can see, I'm gonna put it right in here. All right, 
I'm going to use some Tombow glue. You know me well enough to know that Tombow is definitely my go-to. I like to have the ability to move things around just a tad. You don't need a lot of glue at all for this. And if you concentrate on the edges of your panel piece, you will be fine. And I look at that score line. So I'm looking at the score line, aligning it as straight as I can, just putting that down. And then I'm just gonna move it around just a little bit. And there we have our panel piece. And give it a nice burnish with your finger. You can also turn it upside down and give that a really nice burnish. That's going to help things to, to set well. And you can see we're, we're getting there. Let's put our other panel on. So I'm just going to flip this around. And I know this is crazy, but make sure before you start gluing that you know what side you need to glue. Just do a little bit of a dry fit before you put everything on. And I'm going to glue again just on the edges. And you don't need a lot. And just like I did on the other side, I'm going to align that. This time I'm using the left side, that slanted piece to try to get things as straight as I can and as even as I can. And there we go. Give that a nice little burnish. Turn that over and give it a really good burnish. All right, so we have our card base all set. I just love that color combination. <clears throat> I think the three, the sweet sorbet, the parakeet party, and the Tahitian tide work together incredibly well. Now let's look at where we're going and what we have left to do. Let's tackle the inside. And for the inside of the card, I used one of my favorite die sets, I think of all time and that is the stitched rectangles dies. I use the largest die that is in that set. And I simply took a piece of basic white, cut that out, and I'm going to put that in the center. That will be for a sentiment, um, for anything that I want to write. And I could also, if I wanted to, put some stamped images on this. It would be really pretty to complement what was done on the front, but I am going to leave it a complete black, blank canvas and just put a piece of basic white. And again, I'm going to center that as best as I can. And that looks pretty good. I will turn that over and give that a nice burnish so that the piece lays nice and flat. One thing this also does, I think, is when you add that piece in the middle, it helps define where the slants are. Now that you have a straight line in the background, those slants really stand out. I am going to now focus on doing the elements for the left panel, the one that I have in the parakeet party. And another piece that I created for this it comes from the rectangles dies, the stitched rectangles dies collection. I picked one that I thought was a really nice size to fit on this panel to give some definition. Again, I'm going for that rectangular look that is really going to help visually offset these slants. And also I wanted to give it some height. You may notice that I put a couple of score lines and all I did was I put this piece in my scoring board and about, about an eighth of an inch or so on each side, I just put one score line. So down every single side, give it a little bit of character. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that onto the panel. I'm gonna open that up so that I can get it kind of flat and just get a little bit of adhesive with my Tombow, I'm going to go inside the score lines because all I'm really trying to do is get this in place. I don't need to put a ton of glue on the back. And then I'm going to 
put this piece, I'm eyeballing it so that I get it straight on this side, on the left. And I'm trying to get sort of the same amount of space here in the upper right and here in the lower right. And if I don't get it exact, it is fine. It's just trying to sort of visually center. And that looks pretty good. So give that a nice burnish and I'll turn it over and burnish it again. Now, this is where I really started using some of the elements from the Sending Smiles bundle. And you will see that from a stamp perspective, I used a couple of the flowers and the stem. I used the multi-leaf stem. I stamped that in Parakeet Party, as you can see here. And then I used a couple of the flowers. This piece is just so pretty. That was done in Sweet Sorbet. And I wanted to use another one of the flowers. That was done in Sweet Sorbet as well. And then for the centers, you've got the center for this flower. That was actually done in Mango Melody. I wanted to add a little bit of yellow. So, okay, I went outside the lines of the in colors, but I thought the Mango Melody was just bright and really added some pop. And that's what I use for that stamp. And then the center of the larger flower is the one that's down here. Everything was stamped with the um, colors that I mentioned onto basic white. And then I came back with the corresponding dies and I cut each of those pieces out. So the one that has the um, stem with the multiple leaves and then the flower, the flower, and use those. So that's what came together for those particular pieces of the flower. And I'm just gonna bring out those pieces here. So this is what I created for the front. And all I'm gonna do for these is attach them with a little bit of Tombow. And again, you don't need to use an awful lot of glue on these pieces because I'm okay if some of the edges are not glued down. To me, it looks a little bit more natural if you have some petals that are kind of popping up just a little bit and giving a little bit of almost a three-dimensional feel. So I'm very lightly going in and putting in some Tombow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. And I wanted to have it swooping a little um, so that I have the leaf intentionally off the paper, off the white. And it is, as you can see, hanging over the side. And it's also not got an, an awful lot of glue on there. It's popping up a little bit, which also gives it some fun dimension. Then we're gonna take the larger of the two flowers and put that right up at the top. And for this one, I'm just gonna put some Tombow in the middle. Again, I'm fine if some of those petals look like they're coming up. They're a little bit three-dimensional. We're gonna go ahead and just put that right down. In fact, when it dries, I may pull those petals, curl them up just a little bit to give them some more dimension. And then I'm using the last flower. You can see that I started stamping on the other side. I didn't like the way that that stamp came out. That's why God invented two sides of a piece of paper so that we can just flip it over. And on this one, I am purposely holding the right petal up just a little bit as I am pushing the other down because I'm definitely wanting to give that a little dimension. So there we go, there we have the flower. Just a couple of things that are left for us to do before this card is finished. One is the sending sentiment, the die cut. And as I mentioned, this is done with two dies that come in the set. The first is this background. And that is what I use to cut out the white and bring in what I put together for the sentiment. So this background piece, comes from this die and it is really fun to use. It is a great place to um, put the script on the top. 
So I use this to cut out the back. And then the script die is what I used to cut out the front. The back was done with basic white. The front is done with Tahitian Tide. And it gives you a really, really nice script. One tip, there is a very small die cut that goes on the dot for the eye. Just make sure that you capture that. What you might want to do is grab a piece of washi tape. And when that die cut is um, ready to pop out, just stick it on that piece of washi tape. And that way you are going to know where you put the, that little um, dot for your eye and it won't escape. It gets a little frustrating if you, you need to chase it around. And then simply combine those two pieces, the background and the scripted piece. What I did on that is I just put a couple of dots of Tombow on the back of this script. I used some tweezers, held it over, and just put it flat on the, on the background. And it works incredibly well. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to the front of the card. Now, when you do this, pay attention to where the script, where the word ends on this diagonal, because you're not going to want to put any glue behind the part of the word that is going to be hanging over the side. Otherwise, you might glue this closed. And obviously, we don't want to do that. So take a look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my gluing right before the N. I'll finish on the I, and I'm not going to put anything on that N. And that's going to allow the piece to hang over. So I'm going to flip my sentiment over and put some glue. Again, I don't need to drench this in glue. I just want it to have enough that it is going to stay where I want it to go. And remember what I said is I'm going to glue, put glue on the eye, but I'm not going to go further. Because if I do, I'm going to take a chance that I will get too much glue and I'll actually glue my card shut. That's not what I want to do. All right, I can now glue this down. And if you kind of hover over the top and figure out where you want it to go, I'm eyeballing on the right, looking at how much I want to have hang over and also positioning it on the flower. I want part of that stem on the bottom to show so that it definitely shows off the, the um, work that I have done on that flower. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there. I think that will look nice. And because I didn't put any glue past that eye, there is no chance, there's no glue here. So that is not gonna get glued together. Okay, well, we've got a couple more things. We have a sentiment that we're gonna add down at the bottom. That is going to be on the right panel which is nice, gives a little bit of a two-part greeting. And what I did for that is I used the birthday wishes. So many combinations that you have in this in the stamp set. You're sending smiles, good luck, sunshine, hugs, birthday wishes, thanks, hello, comfort and strength. So you can see that there are a lot of different uses for this set but I'm in a birthday theme, so I'm gonna use my birthday wishes. As I mentioned in the die set, there are a couple of dies that you can use to cut the sentiments. And what's nice about these is they come in two lengths, which mirror the lengths of these sentiments. The longer one, like the sunshine to brighten your day, works beautifully with the larger of the sentiment dies but I'm using the smaller die for the birthday wishes because it is a relatively short sentiment. And what I decided to do because I wanted to have all the sentiments on the card have backgrounds of basic white is I went ahead and I stamped the birthday wishes. I used the sweet sorbet to pull in a little bit more of that red into the card. 
And I cut it out with the smaller of the dies that I just showed you. But that die is going to be too long. No worries. That's again why we have so many tools. And one of those tools is a very basic set of scissors. So I'm going to bring in the final card. And you're going to see that what I did on that is I simply cut it down. I wanted to be able to put that sentiment on the bottom so that I would have the capability of opening the card. And in order to do that, I need to make a little cut. So I'm going to just take my scissors and get pretty close to the right side and try. If I don't make it perfectly vertical, I am fine. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm just going to cut that. And then I'm going to dry fit this. Dry fitting means test it before I actually put it down. And I can see that it's going to be a little bit tight on the left side. So I can pull it down just a smidge. And I'm going to cut that just a teeny, teeny bit more. And depending upon your card and your sentiment, you might just have to trim a little bit at a time and do it a little bit at a time because that way you'll get it to the size that you want. So let's take a look at this. So again, I'm gonna dry fit it and that is going to work very well. You can see that on the left side and on the right side, everything is coming together and that it is going to fit when I pull that card up. And then I wanted to give it a little bit of, a, of height. So I am going to use a couple of my mini dimensionals. To me, it needed to have a little bit of a pop on the bottom. So I'm just gonna add a couple of little dimensionals on here. These mini dimensionals are so useful, especially for thin pieces like the one that I'm dealing with right now. Um, you definitely could use the regular dimensionals and cut them so that they're a little bit smaller, but these are gonna work really, really well. One thing when, what, that I do when I'm working with dimensionals is before I stop putting dimensionals on, I always test the piece. I just turn it over and make sure that there aren't any sags. I always want to make sure that I have the height in the middle of the piece as well. And that's going to work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and take the wax paper off and then align this so that I can pop it right on the bottom. And I'm going to do one more dry fit because I really want to make sure that I'm gonna get this in the right place. And I'm gonna close. I'm just holding this over, making sure, yep, I'll be able to open and close the card. I'm going to put the sentiment up against the edge. So I'm gonna try and get it so that it is right up against the edge of the card. This is more visual than anything. And then I'm gonna turn that vertically and I'm gonna try and get the sentiment lined up with the bottom of my card, just so that it looks pretty straight. And as you can tell, there's no issue in opening the left side. The last thing we need to do is add a little bling. And the bling is a little hard to see on camera because the bling that I chose to use are pretty clear in terms of color. I thought they did a really nice job kind of mimicking dew or water, you know, just a little bit of um, a pop, nothing too dramatic. And I'm going to put a couple of opal rounds. I love these, as you can tell, because I don't have many left. They are just, they're fun. They're not particularly perfect in terms of shape, but that's okay.
because we're just going for a little bit of interest. I'm going to put one of those opal rounds up at the top, another of them down here. I'm kind of mimicking what I did on the first card. So two of those. And then these elegant faceted gems. I love these as well and have used several packages. They are really pretty. They have amazing patterns. There's some hatches in these, frosted ones, clear ones, and then a light pink. I'm gonna use the clear ones. I'm just gonna grab a couple of these. Um, I'm gonna put one of the smaller ones on top of the, the flower. So put that one right there. Grab another one of those small ones and pull that over onto the designer series paper. And then I'll use, yeah, I'm gonna keep going with the small ones. Another small one and put that right down here at the bottom. And I like to do odd numbers when I have embellishments. It tends to um, not trick the eye into pairing things. So I've got two, three, four, and five. So that is the final card. I hope you have enjoyed this card. You're gonna see that these two look pretty identical. Uh, the only thing is the designer series paper. I use the six by six designer series paper so much that I ran out of the patterns and the colors that you see here and I had to swap it out. But other than that, these are absolutely identical. So please try this. I think you're going to love it. They are just fun, a little different and a great way to pull a beautiful card together. Thanks so much for joining me and happy stamping.